Time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, how do you feel today? Uh, how do you feel about our government? How do you feel about what direction we're going in uh, the country today uh, after inauguration? Uh, we have on the show round two with L Louis Booty Beltrami, folks. Uh, hey, folks, uh, this is going to be a show I think that be, you'll be thinking a lot. And I would hope that after the end of the show, whether you're pro, whether you're against, or whatever con, that you, uh, makes you think about what's going on in the country today. I want to welcome all our new viewers uh, that are in the uh, Harrisburg area now. I appreciate that very much. We're getting a lot of nice comments from you, uh, and I appreciate the cable companies that are running the show. Now, folks, I want you to get a pencil and paper out, uh, please. Uh, some of you have been asking me about the section that I told you to go to the Obamacare, which is the Affordable Health Care Act. If you recall... When Dr. Greco was on the show in uh, Congress in Barletta, we talked about certain sections of that that you should be concerned about <clears throat> because many people didn't believe what was in it. So I'm going to read these sections off a little later on, but get a pencil and paper, and you can always Google the affordable health care and go to those sections and read them for yourself. Booty, how are you? I'm fine, Sam. How are you this morning? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing terrific. No use complaining. Thanks for coming and visiting me I when I was in the hospital. My, pro you know? my pleasure. Yeah. It was an interesting hour conversation we had there. And I got to tell you, Booty, I have to thank uh, all the people that were very nice to me at the Hazelton uh, Hospital, the General Hospital. Anyway, Booty, um, <coughs> many people who know you, there are a lot of people who know you've been around a long time. What are you, uh, 46 years old now or 50? Well, I'm, I'm, get, I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting up there, Sam. I'm 79. I'll be 80 soon. And you but, work out uh, every day. That's I work true. out every day. I feel like a 25-year-old. Yeah. Uh, I'm in good shape, thank God. And I work out every day, seven days a week. That's terrific. You know, I wish I could say that, but I'm not. So you, could do, you could do it. Sam. I know. It's because I'm lazy. Well, That's the problem. I'm lazy. The hardest uh, part is putting your sneakers on. That's it. Uh, Booty, a little bit about yourself. You know, you know, to tell people about yourself, a little bit about who you are. Who am I? Yeah. I was growing up uh, in a family. My mother came from Italy when she was uh, seven years old, and my father came here. And uh, they, they happened to meet up into Hazleton. Uh, and my, they, mother, my mother got married at the age of 15. And uh, they had 14 kids. I have number 11. And uh, it was beautiful. It was really beautiful growing up on 1G Street with, with 13 brothers and sisters. It was fantastic. It was the American dream. The American dream. I was eight years old. My father made me a shoeshine box. I walked down on Broad Street. I went to work in Charlie Scran's barber shop. I shined shoes all day. I cleaned the spittoons. I cleaned the mirrors. And I went to the theaters with singing Chattanooga Shoeshine Boy until 11 o'clock at night. And I went home. I gave my mother the money. It was the American dream. Now, today, if I, somebody would send their son out with a eight or nine years old to go shine shoes, There'd be somebody from the Labor Department or some government agency that comes and say, you can't do that. So what I see today in the country, Sam, is I see our American dream slowly but surely fading away from us. Now it's the government's dream. Our government, whether it's local, state, or federal, it's their dream and this is their model. Go out and work, all you Americans. Go out there and work hard every day. Go work and work until you're blue in the face. That's what we want you to do. Go out and work so that you could give us your money to make the government's dream come true. So it went from the American's dream to the government's dream. In your experiences, okay, um, you know, you, in the, you, you worked hard, you, you know, you're a successful businessman, you have the, you know, Booty's Place now, um, does very well, you, you, and you're dealing with a lot of people. Um, sometimes people think that, you know, um, um, uh, you, you were given everything, you know. Anybody who's successful today is, for some reason, uh, the way the world has changed in the last four years, uh, where people who are, uh, who are millionaires who are successful are bad people, you know, and we want to get their money. We want them to share. Um, before it was the opportunity of, of becoming successful, the entrepreneurism, okay? And the way I'm seeing things, and not uh, here again, it seems like I'm, I'm always hammering or, or well, disliking, yeah. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. 
First of all, you need people that have productive minds, people that go out there, they think. They think for themselves. They invent something. They manufacture something. They came up with an idea. Those people are far and in between. So those people that are successful, they employ people. They put other people to work that gives them the families the opportunity so that their sons and daughters could get an education. We need entrepreneurs. We need millionaires. We need billionaires. That's what makes this country. Everybody has the same opportunity. We Unfortunately, that <coughs> is, is, is the way it should be, Booty. But when you have, when you start becoming decided and dividing the country, okay, the way I've seen it in the last four years, um, where their the entitlement programs have gone out of, have gone out of control. Uh, and um, here again, it seems that when you begin to talk, the, you, you begin to say, well, for example, the access cards, okay? We know there's a tremendous amount of abuse. Had a representative, Jerry Knowles, on the show, and he sends his best incidentally. And we talked about a lady who called from Tamaqua. And she said to me, she was 90, 69 years old. I told you this story, but I want to repeat it to our viewers. 69-year-old lady from Tamaqua, okay, uh, came from a... a you know, a home that worked all their lives. She said, I voted for Barack Obama. I thought we we're gonna have a better better life with him. And she said, I, that's still de to be determined. However, she said, Mr. Lasan, I was very upset the other day. I'm in the grocery store and I get, I, this story could be repeated a zillion times. She said, I'm, I bought cheese, milk and eggs and I think in bread. And she said, I'm in my purse <coughs> trying to find out if I have enough money to pay for that. He said, in front of me are two young guys, okay, maybe 20s to 20, dressed to, to the nines, fabulous, and they have four steaks, they have all this grocery, et cetera, pulls out an access card, okay? And she said, look, I, I, I don't, I, she said, I, I come from a big, a big family, we all worked all our lives. I want to help people. It's not that I don't want to help people, but where is the justice here, Mr. Lassant, where these people are just thumbing their nose at us and just using the system the way it is? Where, where does this stop? You know, where does this stop? It's not the people that are using the system. It goes back to our government officials. It goes back to leadership. You see, the problem we have is we have a, let's say, for instance, a governor. He runs for office for four years. Now he has a chance to run again for four more years. That gov governor or whoever, whatever governor, he is not going to make the drastic changes that are needed. He is not going to go put a limit. You can collect welfare for, for one year. Everybody gets into hard times. Collect it for one year. But after one year, if you don't have a job, I'm sorry. We just can't keep supporting you for that. You think any government's gonna, governor right now who's going to run for re-election is going to do that? Absolutely not. Everything that we have in place right now should be scrapped. All these programs, different agencies, should be scrapped, but no one, no governor, will ha has the intestinal fortitude to stop it. And the reason he wants votes, and as long as he, long as people are collecting, getting this free, getting that free, they're going to vote for this governor. Take it away, take all these goodies away. And he's not going to get reelected. That's why we need term limits. The thing is this. Okay, well, I want to talk about term limits because there's pros and cons. But here again, and with all due respect to the governor, he is working on welfare reform. And he's getting clobbered from the Democrats on the other side. Okay, um, from what I understand. Okay, now uh, the governor will be coming on the show hopefully in March. Uh, to, to this, what he said he was going to do, okay, he is, he's putting it in, in into effect but he's running into a lot of controversy now because he is cutting down on, he's looking at the pensions, which are gonna be, as Brian Rich said, it's gonna destroy the country, okay? Not only here, but across the country. But he's looking at the welfare fraud, and so is the current uh, administration, uh, the legislators looking at the welfare fraud. But how far do they go, Booty? They're looking at it, but they're not looking that, at it fast enough. Well, It's that, already two years in office. Yeah. It's two years. Mm -hmm. It's already two years. Nothing happened in two years. Now all of a sudden we're going to start looking at the third year. Listen, I have respect for the governor, but you need a governor, you need someone that's going to go in office that's going to say, this is the way it has to be. We need to change it. We need it right now. As long as we keep going in the direction that we are going now, 
Sooner or later, the working man is going to say, hey, why should I work? Because if I make $42,000 a year, I figure it out. I'm better off quitting working and collecting all the, getting all these goodies. Folks, I'm talking to Louis Booty Beltrami. A lot of discussion on what's happening today. I, I think we're voicing the same concerns everybody has. But I'd like for you to do one thing. Put your prejudice aside right now. Put your Democrat and your Republican, hang them uh, in the closet, and just think uh, in general. We're in a mess in the country today, folks. There's no question about it. And how do we get there? And what do we do after we listen to the show today? Do we do anything? Uh, term limits. Some people think it's great. Some people think it's not good. What about the uh, uh, the approval rating? If, 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 he's, if the president is doing such a bad job, of course, he has a 48% approval rating, which I understand is, is probably the lowest since any reelected president, based on the Drudge Report uh, we received. Uh, we come back. I want to talk about why Booty feels so uh, vehement about term limits. Maybe it's a good thing. He thinks it's a bad thing. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant. My guest today, round two, Louis Booty Beltrami. But before we get to Booty, I want to thank every one of you who are watching us. Remember, on our website, SSPTV.com, we're streaming now, folks, 24-7. So no matter where you are uh, in the world, you can watch everything we're doing right as we're doing it, okay? Uh, particularly our news of Sam Sancho, The Girls, Body Beautiful, you name it, It's Your Health, all the shows that we produce, I Care Today, uh, just a... a, a, a plethora of shows that we're producing. You can watch them now 24-7 and also video on demand. Uh, I told you to get a pencil and paper for those people who I said about going to the health care, the Obamacare health care, which is Affordable Health Act. Uh, these are the sections that we want you to look at. Uh, the section is 1322, uh, section 2012, section 2950, section 3403, and section 4001. I'll repeat them for you because a few people have called me about this. These are the people that are, uh, voted for Obama and think of the Obamacare is, is a wonderful thing. And, and I just want you to look at these sections. Section 1322, section 2012, section 2950, section 3403, and section 4001. Uh, getting back to what you were saying, Booty, about term limits. Now, uh, you have a, a fabulous restaurant, Booty's Place, okay, um, on the Churchill Mall. And when you have a successful person, okay, who was running your place, and they're doing very well, all right, well, do you say you're only going to work eight years and then you're going to fire them, okay? So you may have some legislators that are in office that are really doing a great job. Well, before, before I lose my train of thought, yeah. if I operate a restaurant like the government operates the government, I wouldn't be in business for five days. I would be out of business. Listen, Sam. The government, right now, the government, we're in debt $16 trillion. We have 8.3 million Americans out of work. We borrow 46 cents on every dollar we spend. And we spend, in, we spend more money than we take in. Now, if Booty's Place is operating and I take in $500, how could I go out and pay, how could I go out and spend $700? I can't do it. Because at the end of the month, I'm going to have a deficit that's going to blow my mind apart. And sooner or later, if I keep up doing this, spending more money than I take in, eventually I have to file for bankruptcy. Now, the government... They're in debt $16 trillion. They're going up borrowing every day. They don't care. Ladies and gentlemen out there, I am going to predict this to you. If this keeps up, the United States of America will be forced to file bankruptcy at the rate that we're going. But don't you think there is <coughs> enough intelligence in the, uh, with the amount of lawyers we have in the U.S. Senate and the Congress the uh, amount of t intelligence that supposedly uh, people that are there, don't you think they're, they're aware of this as well? That's what I keep on scratching my head saying. How, how could, you know, when you read these sections of the Obamacare and you see that there's going to be 15 pa panels, it doesn't sink in. I mean, are you the only one that knows this? No, I'm not the only one that knows it. There's a lot of the top economists in this country 
are every day saying we have to stop this So why spending? are guys like Schumer and all the president's men who are, you know, you know Bob Casey and now uh, Congressman Cartwright, they're all supporting the president. I mean, as far as I understand, I, and I stand to be corrected, but they're right there saying, yeah, he's doing the right thing. You know, you had Clinton come up here. Clinton said, this is the man that we should be, uh, reappoint. He is great for this country, you know. So, I mean, why is that? He's great. He's great for the country. I want you people out there to know that I have nothing against this president personally. I just don't like the way he operates and runs this country because he, we are on a path of destruction. His whole agenda last night, I didn't hear him talk about one thing about the debt. I didn't hear him talk about 8.3 million people out of work. I didn't hear him say we have... I didn't hear him say we borrow 46 cents on a dollar. I didn't say to him, I didn't hear him say how he's going to help the economy. I didn't I didn't hear him say one word how he's going to get rid of all these bureaucratic agencies, OSHA, MSHA, all these agencies that come around to businesses and arrest them every day. You can't do this and you can't do that. People are disgusted. Business people are disgusted. They don't want to be in business no more. It's not fun no more. We got somebody with a whip, or we got somebody with a piece of paper and a pencil, and they come around, and they take their badge out. Oh, I'm from the United States government, driving a brand new Jeep, while the owner of a place is driving around in an old Jeep. We just can't keep doing this, Sam. It's not good. He is not doing a good job for the country. No way is he doing a good job. Well, don't you think, uh, you know, do you think the media is, uh, you know, the big media, ABC, CBS? I listen to Chris Matthews once in a while. It's, it's hard for me to take. But, how, and however, when the thing with Benghazi came out, Chris Matthews interviewing, a, a, out talking to people, and the one kid said, well, I think it was a little bit more than this, uh, the tape. And Chris Matthews said, it was the tape that caused the riots. You should know that. You're an idiot. Okay. So you know where he stands. Okay. But they criticize Fox. Because they are the only ones who are bringing a lot of things out, and they're saying, well, when you don't like to hear about a friend of yours that you think is going to be the czar, you know, or the, the emperor, okay, uh, which Obama will, will eventually become, uh, in my opinion, um, you know, you, you start wondering, okay, you know, where is, you know, you, you look at the media, and if there's, and, and it's, it's not hard to see. If they're saying something that happened in a country that's not good, they'll come back and tell you four things that are good about the president. In other words, not holding him to the task of where we have people have paying less, getting less in their checks now. And I have a person who said who's getting forty-two dollars less. That's two thousand dollars a year less, booty. You know what? He, you know what the person said? Well, that's because of Bush. They're blaming Bush yet that their checks are lowing. Okay. They still don't want to understand what's happening in the country today. I don't understand it, Booty. Well, you don't, you don't understand it. It's difficult to understand because our journalism today isn't, they don't do their job. They don't report all the facts. They pick sides. When they pick, they're picking and choosing. Right now they're picking Obama, and that's the socialistic way. They think that's the best way. Well, so did the people in Germany in 1938. They thought Hitler was the best. He was the greatest. Look what he did. Look what happened to the German people. Look at the name that they had, the reputation that the Germans have up until today. No, the journalists someday will find out if they keep doing what they're doing, they will find out that someday someone's going to call them in the phone and say, you only print what we tell you to print. Well, you have. You and have, that's the problem that they're going to have. Well, you have, uh, uh, I would say, 80% of the, of the print media today in the country, okay, are pro-choice, pro-gay marriage, uh, liberal to the nth degree, okay, just giving, you know, giving, uh, you know, if, if there was up to 80%, I, I, my opinion again, of the liberal press, they would feel that everyone who's out who's illegal should be made legal, okay, in the country, uh, and 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 they deserve what they're getting, okay. They deserve to get these access cards, and they we don't deserve to make decisions. They they shouldn't have the right to make decisions. But they do. They shouldn't have the they right to be opinionated. You. I understand that the standard speaker, all these people, they come out and they backed Obama for president. They shouldn't. They shouldn't be, have the right to do that. Journalism, newspapers are supposed to report the facts, the way the fact, facts that happen. If there's a story, they should go out and investigate it first before they report it. Listen, Sam, about journalism, let's go back 
1974, 75. <clears throat> I turned the TV on one night. On, I turned the TV on one night on channel 16, WN up at Wilkes-Barre, and all of a sudden I see my picture on the paper, my picture on the screen, that I was the head of the Cosa Nostra in 19, I was the head of the Cosa Nostra in 19, uh, in northeastern Pennsylvania, lower Luzerne County. And that I was known, listen to this close everybody, that I was not known to have hid a hit man in 1939. I was six years old, and they reported it. Is that fair? Is that fair to me, my family, or anyone else? No. But the press, they still do what they want to was do. Was it ever corrected? Yes, we had a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And they settled. Well, that's, that's the, the, the sad part. Okay, I have to say that there, you know, I think, you know, my, our relationship <coughs> with the, the Time Shamrock people, I've always found them to be very related to but me. But remember something. When somebody puts a label on your forehead, oh, yes, yes. somebody puts a label, yeah, yeah, yeah. the settlement that we did, yeah. monetary settlement, didn't erase this label. Exactly. People still today yeah. think that. See, uh, Booty. It's sickening. Yeah, if you're Italian and you're successful in business, you're, you're the member of the mafia. If you're Jewish and you're successful, you're a good businessman. And with all Sam, due respect, you know. Read my book, and you're going to find out there is no mafia. Yeah. When you read my book. You'll find out. I'm, there is I'm no waiting for it. Here. Folks, I'm going to have a quick break. As you can tell you, it's, 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 it's food for discussion. But what do you do? What do we do? Do we uh, look at uh, term limits? Uh, what about people? Uh, how do we respond to that? Uh, my email is sam at ssptv.com. Always welcome the opposite viewpoints. Folks, you know, we, it's, it's uh, facts, as I said, are very difficult things to take sometimes. Uh, but we are asking you to look at the, the facts here. Be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, 24-7 SSPTV.com. You know, folks, it's interesting. Uh, I get a lot of uh, comments uh, from people saying, you know, uh, why don't you bring other people on? Well, folks, I've, inviting, uh, I've invited uh, Congressman Cartwright, now Congressman, and even when he ran in primaries, I'm still waiting to have him to respond. Hopefully he'll uh, get the message to come on the show. And also, Planned Parenthood, folks, I've invited him in 1994. I tell him, come on, tell us why you think pulling little babies apart at 10, years, 10 weeks old is great. Uh, we haven't heard of, we haven't heard from Planned Parenthood, so I do give the people the opportunity uh, and, and invite them. Booty, where do we go from here? You know, you're looking at a, a, a country right now that is divided. You know, uh, wh where do where do we go from here? Sam, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you an example. While it's fresh in everybody's mind out there, we're talking about term limits. Here's an example: If you people out there, you nice people, and you're hardworking people. If you read the paper in the last three weeks, you saw one thing that hit you like a bomb in the head. Todd Aegis gets, withdraws $94,000 from his pension and is now collecting $30,000 a year or more every year for the rest of his life. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, please, we need term limits. We have to stop the taught each of us of this world. We can't afford these pensions. He, how smart was he? The state is going on without him now for the last going on four years. We don't need the same people every two, every for, for our life. We don't need them. We need a change. We don't need the Clintons. We don't need the Obamas anymore. We need a change. Please fight and voice your voice. Come loud and clear. Don't be afraid to speak about term limits. That's the best thing that could happen to this country. You mentioned something before. I said, <clears throat> what, do you, what are you doing? You said we have to pray. And pray, Sam. We have to pray as hard as we could pray because there are miracles out there. And I don't know if I have the time to tell you a little story. You got about a minute. About a minute. Well, I can't tell you the story. Well, anyway, during one, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in 1941, Admiral Nimitz was, they, President Roosevelt sent him over. He went there and he gave an evaluation to give him an evaluation of what happened. And he's walking off the ship. One of the Osmonds said, Bird, pretty bad there. Isn't it really bad, Admiral? He said, no, son. He said, God was on our side. 
God was on our side three different times. They never touched the dry docks. They never touched the ammunition on top of the hill. They, never, they did it on a Sunday. It's, we only lost 38, we, we had 38,000 men off. We only, lost a few, we only lost a few men. We still had enough men. We still had enough, we, the dry docks were there. We didn't have to tow the ships back to the United States. We towed them to the dry docks. We had enough welders, mechanics, and people with knowledge to do it. So God was on our side. And that's what we need today. We need to pray to get God on our side to stop all of this. Well, unfortunately, Booty, we're going to have to have round three. We have round two now. But let me just tell you, Booty, when you look at the, uh, the <coughs> Democrat platform, and there was like 2,200, 2,600 words, and not one word was God in it. And when they wanted to put God into the platform, you recall at the convention, people didn't see this. They showed it on Fox, where when they said they wanted to put God back into the platform, the Democratic platform, God was booed three times. They can take God out of the government fast enough, okay, uh, to make this as secular as we can, and we could go on and on with that. The, the, all these government officials, they want to be God. That's why they don't want to, they don't want to mention God. They're the God. Hello. Folks, Booty Beltrami, I told you it'll be an interesting uh, show. Uh, I welcome comments, folks. I really do, okay? I really want your side uh, to know that. As far as pension programs, there's pros and cons. Some people feel that Todd should be getting that. Some people feel that he shouldn't be getting that, but because those are opinions. 24-7, uh, you can watch this show anywhere in the world. Thank you so much for your comments. We'll see you next time.